Sickle cell disease is one of hemoglobin disorders and it was first reported in the United States of America in the year 1910 by James Herrick. It refers to a group of hereditary hemoglobin disorders that are characterized by transformation of the normal red blood cells into sickle shape on deoxygenation. Then it is produced due to single point mutation. And this sickle cell disease occurs because of a single point mutation. The abnormal hemoglobin known as hemoglobin S results from substitution of valine for glutamic acid at the sixth position of the beta chain. The sickle cell disease includes sickle cell anemia, that is the homozygous HBS disease and the most common form, sickle cell or beta thalassemia, sickle cell or HBC disease. These are the three most common forms of sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is inherited in an autosomal codominant manner and in homozygotes only produce abnormal beta chains that make hemoglobin S resulting in the clinical syndrome of sickle cell disease whereas heterozygotes produce a mixture of normal and abnormal beta chains that make the normal HbA and HbS therefore resulting in the clinically asymptomatic state known as sickle cell trait. The gene that's related to sickle cell anemia is the hemoglobin gene or the HBB. Hemoglobin contains iron and transports oxygen from the lungs to the peripheral tissues. Hemoglobin protein is a 146 amino acid long and is found in the chromosome 11. In a normal hemoglobin A, there are four protein subunits, that is two alpha subunits and two beta subunits. There will be different mutation forms of hemoglobin when there is a mutation in the beta subunit. And the abnormal beta chain is designated betas, beta S and the tetram of alpha 2 beta 2 is designated hemoglobin S. In sickle cell trait, an S mutation in one copy of hemoglobin beta gene occurs and half of the beta subunits therefore are replaced with the beta S gene. Sickle cell disease is whereby this both copies of hemoglobin beta gene have an S mutation and all of these persons beta subunits are replaced by the beta S. And in sickle cell hemoglobin C, this results in one of the beta subunits is replaced with beta C and one is replaced with beta S. The mutation happens because glutamic acid residue replaces the lysine residue at the sixth position of the beta globin chain. Hemoglobin S is unstable and polymerizes in the setting of stresses leading to the formation of a sickle red blood cell. This sickle cell results in hemolysis and release of adenosine triphosphate which is then converted to adenosine. Adenosine binds to its receptor known as A2B resulting in production of 2 tree by phosphoglycerate and induction of more cycling and to its receptor A2A on the natural killer cells resulting in pulmonary inflammation. The free hemoglobin from hemolysis scavenges nitric oxide causing endothelial dysfunction and this occurs because of the abnormal interaction with the vascular endothelium. It can also lead to vascular injury and pulmonary hypertension. The rate of cycling is influenced by intracellular concentration of hemoglobin S and by presence of other hemoglobins within the cell. And this process results in anemia, first occlusive episodes, organ damage and increased susceptibility to infection. Therefore, abnormal hemoglobin C variant participates in polymerization more readily than hemoglobin A. Whereas hemoglobin F strongly inhibits polymerization and its presence markedly retards cycling. Some factors that increase cycling include the red blood cell dehydration and, and factors that lead to formation of deoxyhemoglobin S such as acidosis and hypoxemia that is the eta systemic or local in tissues. Distribution of sickle cell gene normally parallels that of plasmodium vasiborum. The clinical features of sickle cell disease occur at the first year of life when the levels of hemoglobin F fall 
and they are related to hemolytic anemia and vascular occlusion which in turn causes pain, organ dysfunction and organ failure. Growth failure and psychosocial problems can be present in these patients. Splenic infarction results in autosplenectomy that leads to frequent septicemia. And aplasty crisis, splenic sequestration crisis and vascular occlusion crisis are most common in these patients with sickle cell disease. Common signs of these acute pain episodes include the spine and long appendicular and thoracic bones, and these episodes can last hours to days. Cerebral complications due to vascular occlusion such as strokes are more often seen in children. Sometimes these patients may be asymptomatic due to presence of high amount of HBF, which interferes with polymerization, or may be co-inheritance of gene for a thalassemia or hereditary persistence of HBF. They may also be having chronic hemolytic anemia that produces jaundice, gastrons, splenomegaly, and poor healing ulcers over the lower TB. Priabzim is present in male children. What is a sickle cell crisis? A crisis is an acute onset of pain, and in sickle cell disease we have vasoclusive crisis that occurs when many children develop hand foot syndrome, and it also affects the chest, abdomen, and long bones in case of juxta articular position. This pain may last for two to six days, and the second crisis is aplastic crisis. Infections, especially the bovine virus B19, can lead to proven drop in hemoglobin by producing red cell aplasia. The third crisis is the megaloblastic crisis, which occurs due to inadequate fluid levels in the body and folic acid requirement is high in hemolytic anemia and this factor is responsible for its severity. Splenic sequestration crisis. This one is usually seen under the age of 2 years and the spleen lapidi enlarges and most of the circulating red cell mass becomes sequestrated. Hemolytic crisis may be related to splenic sequestration of sickle cells before the spleen has been infected as a result of repeated sickling or coexistent disorders such as glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. And during a physical examination, you realize the patients are often chronically ill and jaundiced. There is hepatomegaly, but spleen is not palpable in adult life. Cardiomegaly and hyperdynamic pericardium and systolic mammas present, and presence of non-healing ulcers in the lower leg and retinopathy may be present. The laboratory findings include full blood count showing chronic hemolytic anemia and hematocritis, usually 30%. Peripheral blood smear is abnormal with irreversibly sickled cells that occupy 5 to 50% of the red blood cells. And reticulocytosis, nucleated red blood cells are present. Features of hyposplenism such as presence of whole jolly bodies and target cells are present. The white blood cells count is elevated to about 12,000 to 15,000 per microliter and reactive thrombocytosis. Indirect bilirubin levels are very high. Sickling test can be used to diagnose these patients and is confirmed by hemoglobin electrophoresis. In hemoglobin electrophoresis of sickle cell disease, hemoglobin S is usually comprises 85 to 98% of hemoglobin. In homozygous S disease, no hemoglobin A will be present. Hemoglobin F levels are variably increased and high hemoglobin F levels are associated with more benign clinical cause. Chest x-ray can be done for the cases of acute chest syndrome. The treatment of sickle disease can be divided into the general care whereby you treat to relieve the pain, prevention of dehydration and treating fever and psychosocial support. Dietary advice is very important whereby it includes adequate intake of calories, folic acid, vitamin C, vitamin E and zinc supplement. Then you have to manage the complications that arise like infection and including prophylactic penicillin. Immunization such as pneumococcal vaccination at the age of 18 months followed by boosters every 5 years. Immunization against H influenza is suggested by the age of 18 months.
blood transfusions in the cases of anemia and this is argued by the suppression of HBS which could lead to decreased vasoclusive episodes. Human aid pain using aggressive use of appropriate analgesics, fluid supplement and looking for the cause of the infection. Then the most promising agent used in sickle cell disease is hydroxyurea. And this hydroxyurea has the ability to induce fetal hemoglobin synthesis. Bone marrow transplantation and gene therapy may be applicable to sickle cell disease. And prenatally, you diagnose this sickle cell disease using chronic villus biopsy. The complications from sickle cell disease affect almost every system in the body. In cardiovascular system, you'll be having anemia that leads to myocardial ischemia and myocardial infarction. Pulmonary system, there will be due to vasoclusion, infections or both, sometimes development of acute chest syndrome that is related to infection or infarction. The central nervous system, there will be transient ischemic attacks, strokes and cerebral hemorrhage, gallstones, recurrent abdominal pain due to vasoclusive crisis, and hepatomegaly and hepatic dysfunction. Reproductive system, there will be placenta infarcts that lead to intrauterine growth retardation, low birth weight, spontaneous abortion is increased in these patients. And in the urinary system, there will be kidney failure, hematulia, hypostanoria, increased urinary tract infection, hyperuricemia and gout. And there will be retinopathy, foot syndrome, a vascular necrosis of the hip, osteomyelitis, skin ulcers around the ankle joint.